So today I'm going to go over the uh, conduction system with the, of the heart, the PQRS conducting system, basically the overview of how the heart works uh, to get us our foundation. Then from there we're going to move on to our uh, commonly missed rhythms, basically uh, some pearls talking about SVT, sinus tachycardia, and then ending with our blocks, our AV blocks, one through three. We get a lot of questions from our students initially like, hey, how do we decipher these blocks? What are some tricks of the trade? So we're going to move right over here to our conductive system, all right? The, the, the foundation of what we're talking about. So the overview of this, we want to start, uh, have a rhythm up here, it's a hand-drawn rhythm, basically the, the, the four things we're really looking at. But we'll start with the P wave. The P wave is our depolarization of the atria. This is usually should be our first upright deflected wave off the isoelectric line. Now we say it's usually the first because it could be inverted. Um, or there could not be a P wave, um, but the, for the basics of this lecture, depolarization of the atria usually causes an upright deflection of the P wave, and that's why we call the rhythm normal sinus. Uh, if it's not, if it's a junctional, then we don't call it normal sinus. The next one, we very rarely see unless they have like a PE maybe, or, or uh, an, an MI, uh, evolving MI is the Q wave. And that is the depolarization of the septum. It has very small electrical current to it. That's uh, the main reason why a lot of times we never really see a true Q wave. Right, right there, the, the down sloping uh, between the P and the R. Our isoelectric line would be the baseline that we use the TP segment. So the isoelectric line would come straight across here. And this is what the P wave, or the base of the R, uh, the S can go below it. And the, and the T wave, this is where we read our P wave morphology, our T wave morphology, things we'll, we'll talk about when we get about down here. The QRS, the QRS, it's hard to miss. It's, it's when your ventricles are, are uh, depolarizing, it causes a huge spike on your uh, EKG paper because the left ventricle, the right ventricle have a lot of muscle to it with the left having more. So, you know, it's very hard to mistake this. If the patient doesn't have a QRS on your EKG, there's probably a, a, a significant reason why, and uh, we'll pick that up really fast. So it's depolarization of the ventricles. Usually, in a normal sinus rhythm, it will be the first upright deflection after the Q wave. So most of the times, the, the R wave comes straight up, followed by an S, and then you have your ST segment and your T. There are some times where you do not have an R wave, or you may have two R waves, and that'll be for our, our another lecture with our left and right bundle branch blocks. Lastly, the T wave. So the T wave is usually very discernible. It's the next upright deflection in most cases after your QRS. You can have a flat T wave, you can have an inverted T wave, you can have a biphasic T wave. Um, some of those things could be leading to real badness, but usually, you'll see repolarization of the ventricle. So this is the ventricle um, priming for its next beat, and all the EKG is is a piece of paper and ink getting electrical conduction. So that's what it's recording, right? So we look for T wave morphology that we'll talk about in future lectures. Um, the, the shape of the T wave, the height of the T wave, if there's depression, if there's elevation, um, if they're really tented, like tall peak T waves, all these things can have a significant factor. Basically, when you see the P wave, the QRS all in motion, what's happening is when the P, we see the P wave, that is the atrial contracting. As, remember, as the atrial contracts, we have systolic and we have diastolic. It, one's contracting, the other one's relaxing. So the P waves are the atrial contracting. Then you really don't see the depolarization of the P wave, the relaxing, because that's buried in your QRS. So you have the atrial that contracts, then the ventricle contracts. That is now your QRS spike. As the ventricle relaxes, it repolarizes. That is your T wave spike. And then it all starts over again. So P, QRS, and then your T is your ventricle relaxing.